Welcome everyone to Epic Encounters. I hope you enjoy this week's message. I'm confident that the message from this series will meet you exactly where you are. Stay tuned for an epic journey. Second Chronicles. There's two Chronicles. Chronicles 1 and there's also the second portion of Chronicles. Chronicles, the 20th chapter, starting at verse number 20. I'm reading out of the voice application version slash the King James Version slash the New Living Translation Version slash the San Carlos Version. Amen. Early the next morning, they went out to the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and so shall you be established. Adam, believe in his prophets, and so shall you prosper. After consulting the people, the king appointed, watch this, singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. This is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Verse number 22. At the very moment they begin to sing and give praise, the Lord calls the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Sihar to start fighting among themselves. The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Sihar and killed every one of them. And after they had destroyed the army of Sihar, they began attacking each other. So when the army of Judah had arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, all they saw were dead bodies lying on the ground as far as they could see. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. Our key verse will come from verse number 22 and number 23. At the very moment they begin to sing and give praises, the Lord calls the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Sire to start fighting among themselves. To start fighting among themselves. Today I want to talk to you about something that I've been promoting over the last 48 hours. Uh, as we conclude this doxology series, the word doxology means praise. And as we conclude this series on praise, as we conclude this series on praise, I want to end it with this thought for today, the art of noise. I want to talk to us today about the art of of noise, the art of noise. There's something very poetic and, and artistic about how God reacts to praise. And this is interesting because uh, uh, while I'm praising, I should be more concerned about the Lord's reaction than I am about my own reaction. I should be more concerned about the Lord's reaction than I am about whether or not the people around me are praising and worshiping God. I've had to learn this a long time ago in, in leadership and when you're leading a body of people and when you're leading a service, one thing that I had to get over musicians, one thing that I had to get over uh, uh, my friends and, and family, uh, what I had to get over is that I can't be more concerned about who's not praising God. Catch me. I can't be more concerned about who's not praising God, but what I need to have my focus on is what I can control. And what I control is whether or not I'm praising God. I don't hold the service hostage longer because I don't think enough people are worshiping. I don't make us sing more songs and, and, and turn to the crowd and say, start screaming at them because, because they're not off during worship or because they're, they're not opening their mouths. But, but what I can control is my own worship. And if he can't get it out of you, then that means I got to go in deeper then. Learn to focus on my own worship. But here's one thing I can't deny is that when God is magnified, when God is blessed, when God is praised, when God is spoken well of, somehow I receive the benefits. Can't figure that out. He gets worship. He gets praised. He gets blessed. He gets my offering verbally and physically. But out of it, I'm the one that gets blessed 
for blessing him. I like that about God. Won't you clap your hands? So to give us some context here today, the context of this portion of scripture that we just read, because a lot of times we read stories in the Bible and sometimes the preacher starts off right in the middle of the story and we hardly know about what's going on in the story. We just see a story and that's it. And we're wondering how this story connects to his title or to the message. But let me just tell you, give you some context today. Here the, the children of Israel have gotten tired of being bullied they've been bullied by their neighbors they've been bullied by their neighbors neighbors and they've reached a point that when they got tired of being bullied watch this they get tired of being bullied so what they decide to do is to not come up with a game plan of how we're going to fight back not go up with a come up with a game plan of how we're going to recruit more countries to help us fight off our neighboring bullies but the way they respond to being bullied is they decide to start praising God see this is where I want to talk to the crowd right now because I know a lot of us have been bullied all week long we've been bullied by bills we've been bullied by spouses we've been bullied by family we've been bullied by co-workers we've been bullied by employers we've been bullied by lawgivers we've been bullied by the IRS we've been bullied by the city and we get tired of being bullied so I'm telling you right now I think it's very important that we pay attention at what's going on in the scripture the only way that you're gonna fight a bully in this kingdom is you got to start praising God Amen. you have to start praising God that's the only way we properly deal with bullies as believers somebody say help us Lord and so in the middle of praising God something spontaneous happens while they're praising God because they're in the middle of a trial while they're praising God something spontaneous happens and what ends up happening is when they praise God speaks didn't ask for a word from God wasn't expecting a word from God wasn't bribing God for a word, oh God. I, I, I wasn't simping for a word. I, I, I wasn't begging for a word. But while I started praising God, God started to speak. I, I, I'm encouraging somebody that, that, that thinks that they are tired of nobody's listening to them and they're tired of not being heard and they feel like heaven has gone silent on you today. I encourage you, start praising God again and see what God talk back to you starts praising God now now this is what's interesting so what they praise God no no it's not just a matter of so what Adam this is what's interesting historically and traditionally when the Israelites go to war what they do when they go to war is they shout mm -hmm. They start shouting and they make a lot of noise. They start shouting and they start crying out. But this time they decided to do a remix. Somebody say remix. They decided to remix. And as they're about to get into conflict with another country, they decide not to shout today. They decide I'm not crying today. They decide I'm not yelling and I'm not hollering today. But today, instead of shouting, they replace it with praise. Ooh. We're on to something here. We're on to something here. Could it be that, that God is getting after me because maybe I've, done, I've been in a place where I've done a little bit too much crying. I'm in a place where I've done a little bit too much yelling. I've done a place, I'm in a place where I've gone off on people. I've cried out to God about the drama, but in crying out to God about the drama, I've been over dramatic. Oh God, you missed that. Did you catch that? While I'm crying out to God about the drama, I've been over dramatic in the process. And God is getting to a place with his people where he's saying, stop crying so much. Stop yelling so much at the situation. Stop yelling so much at people that you're tired of. But what I need you to do is get to a place that you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. You get frustrated. You get disgusted. You get broken down. And then you decide to praise me. 
So I'm sitting here and, 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 and I'm sitting here. I like this because can, can we back up for a minute and look at the scripture in 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, verse number 20. Believe in the Lord thy God and so shall you be established. Believe in the prophet and so shall you prosper. I, I like this word right here because this word prosper means to push forward or to break out. Some of us have been looking at prosperity the wrong way. We look at prosperity as it's connected to finances. We look at prosperity as it's connected to gain. We look at prosperity as it's connected to treasure. But God says this in Hebrew, the word prosper is connected to somebody breaking out and I don't know about you but I'm looking this week at the wow conference that we're gonna have a bunch of breakout sessions we're gonna have some sessions where we're gonna finally Adam push people forward we're finally gonna get this moving that's why your praise is so important your praise pushes you forward your praise causes a breakout and I don't know who I'm talking to but somebody you the perfect prescription for what you're going to is to break out. Break out. Break out. Break out. No, don't break somebody off, but, but break out. Don't push and shove somebody, but push forward past it. Break out. I said, believe in the Lord, God, thy God, and so shall you prosper. So Jehoshaphat does something interesting. He switches up his style for war. And what Jehoshaphat begins to do in the middle of war. Now, if I'm a strategist, little, I want to send all my assassins, all my mercenaries, all my Navy SEALs, Bill, all my SWAT team, I want to put them on the front line. I want them to go in first. I want them to kick down doors, kick butts, and take names. That's what I want them to do. But Jehoshaphat does something different. What he does is he sends a band in. He gets the band together of singers, of praisers, of instrument players. He puts a band together and says, we want you to go logistically. We're putting you before the people that fight. Did you catch that? Before the people that swing swords and the four of the people that swing axes and, and cleavers and, and before the people that are weapon bearers come out and start flashing on folks I want praise to go before we fight I want praise to go before the fighters I came to preach to the fighters in the room some of us in here have been fighting our whole life you've been fighting people you've been fighting your past you've been fighting your issue you've been fighting yourself you've been fighting your own image you've been fighting your insecurities and I'm telling you it's time out for the fighters the fighters logistically need to move to the back and let the praisers go forward that's the problem we've been fighting our whole life but some battles can't be fought but some battles you've got to praise your way out of Jehoshaphat gets that he gets that. He said, we ain't going to win with swords and shields and bucklers and knives on this one. This one ain't going to be won with the SWAT team and the Navy SEALs. In order to win this battle, let's send the praisers first. He said, put the praisers at the front of the line. Let, let them take some time. Let them get their robes on. <laughs> let them put their robes on. Let them tune up. And after they get dressed, watch this, put them at the front of the line. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Will you just clap your hands right now for the praise? And so this is what it does for those of us that are used to fighting. For those of us that are used to getting our way in the middle of wars. For those of us that like to go hand to hand with the enemy. This is what I like that praise does. Praise allows you to be a spectator. Watch this. Praise allows you to be a spectator while the fight's going on. See, some of us think we're going to win wars by hand-to-hand -hand combat, but this is what I like about praise that God has showed me. 
that God will, will let his people go ahead and praise. And when they get to fight the enemy, they don't even get their hands dirty. So I see this and, 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 and I'm about in that place in my life where I'm tired of fighting it. I'm tired of fighting them. I'm tired of fighting stuff. And truth be told, I'm tired of fighting myself. And God's saying, listen, I want to put you in a place you don't get your hands dirty in the fight no more. You know, that's, that's always a dream of ours, right? You know, we've all wanted to have bodyguards before. We, we've all wanted to have, we all wanted to be like the mob where we got people that handle my beef for me. I got people that'll get at you. I don't have to touch you. I don't have to lift a finger, but I got people that'll get at you. I got people that got people that'll get at you. God says, we work this thing like the mob, little. We work this thing like the mafia in the kingdom. You don't have to get at your enemies, but if you just praise, I'll get, I'll get at your enemies for you. Because I got people that got people that got people. Brings us to our key verse. And our key verse here is in the 22nd, chap the 22nd verse of the Chronicles, Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter. At the very moment... They begin to sing and give praises. Watch this. The Lord calls the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Sire to start fighting among themselves. Y'all got to see this. And after they had destroyed the army of Sire, they begin attacking each other other God said you ain't got to do nothing this is what happens the story plays out like this as they begin to praise because of the noise of the praise they begin to turn the enemies begin to turn on one another you got to bless God for the art of noise the art of noise works like this I praise God fights I praise enemy scatters. I praise and I get blessed with an offering. We're going to see how this plays out. You got to praise God when you think of the art of noise, a holy noise. Your praise does more for you than you would like to believe. And if we come away from this service with an understanding today of how great your praise is, how effective your praise is, I guarantee you we'll come in praising, but we'll leave praising at the same same time somebody clap your hands for that look at the art of noise first of all we see the art of noise produces ambush oh I like this Production produces ambush the word ambush there in Hebrew prophet means to lay or to lie and I said, God, you're messing with me on that. You got to praise God because of what praise does. Praise ambushes your enemy. What are you saying, Lord? Praise ambushes your enemy. Say it three times, Cephas. Praise ambushes your enemy. The word praise, excuse me, the word ambush in Hebrew means to lie. How do you know when your enemies are defeated? It's when you get your enemies to start lying on one another. Oh, God. Can I get a high five on that, prophet? That's how I know my enemies are going down. That's how I know my enemies are being subdued. That's how I know when I'm trotting my enemies under my feet is when my enemies start lying on one another. Praise. The art of noise causes them to ambush. Scripture says that their enemies begin to start murdering one another. They committed mass murder against one another. The second thing that praise does, the art of noise, is the praise from this, from this part of the scripture. The praise right here, uh, it says that they begin to slay one another. I like this. The word uh, slay here in Hebrew means to seclude or to ban from one another. I, I like this because what praise sometimes does is it causes me to seclude or isolate myself from everybody else. Sometimes, I like the commercial, you ever just wanted to get away sometimes? What your praise does sometimes is it puts you in a place that it isolates you from everybody. What your praise does sometimes is it puts your enemy in a place where it bans or isolates them. Sometimes I just need distance between me and my enemy. It ain't even the fact that I wanna see my enemy go down, why? 
because I'm a mature believer. I know my enemy got problems. I know my enemy needs to be delivered. I know my enemy needs to be healed. I don't want to see my enemy die, but sometimes I need distance between me and my enemy. Here it is. The next thing that, that the scripture says that ends up happening after they hear about what happened to Moab and, 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 and the people of Ammon, after they hear about what happened on the battlefield, the next thing the scripture says is they were fearful of what happened. They got scared when they heard about how their God had caused the enemies to turn against one another. I, I, I like this because you got to see where I'm going with this. Uh, the word fear is used over 365 times throughout the Bible. Did y'all know that? If you're taking notes, go ahead and write that down. The word fear is used over 365 times throughout the Bible. Can I just say this? There's enough fear for you to be fearful every day. But can I tell you? you don't be scared don't wake up in fear why because your enemies are more scared of your God than you are scared of yourself and you got to understand that as long as God has got my enemies scared and running for their lives then I don't have anything to fear you know also this that what, what this word tells me fear now we see that the enemy is now in position where my bullies are now getting bullied Look at God in a position to where my bullies are now being bullied. Didn't they start off as the bullies? Yes, they did. But after going through conflict with my God, after I sit back and praise God and let God continue to work on my enemies and fight my battles, I now got my bullies being bullied. Somebody say, help us, Lord. The next thing that happens, scripture lets us know, is that they were stripped, to, they, their bodies were stripped after they were dead. And this is what made me want to praise God right here, is when I saw in scripture that the carcasses were laying there and the carcasses were stripped scripture says that they came away with so much spoils Jehoshaphat and his men came away they, they got away with so much treasure that it took them three days to pick up the treasure off the dead bodies I, I started to praise God for this you know why I praise God for this because it let me know that they begin to praise God so much that God left them an offering y'all gonna hear me in a minute you got to get to a place where you praise God that God likes it so much, he'll leave you an offering. You want to get out of debt? Praise God. He'll leave you an offering. You want to finally get over your, 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 your credit issues? Praise God. He'll leave you an offering. Your praise will get you debt free. Your praise will, locate, will allow you to locate the treasure. Your praise, oh God, your praise will allow God to leave you an offering. I love how the story ends. The story ends with this. Before they go into battle, they're praising God. But after going through all of the different aspects of the art of noise, they said, you know what? Praise is so good before battle, we might as well have a praise and parade service after battle. Some of us, you got to get to the point that once God finally does what he does in my life, I have no choice but to start praising him all over again. Y'all, it's what I call cyclical behavior. And part of it is you have to be sick enough in order to praise God even when you don't want to, even when you don't see a way out, even when you don't see help, you got to praise God and let God do his thing. It's the art of noise. Stand to your feet. Our praise today is important. It's important that you get in a safe place where you start to understand and recognize how important your praise is. Your praise is more important than your cry. Mm -hmm. Your praise, our praise, is more important than our worship. He desires people to praise him. So what does praise mean for me? Praise means I have to get to a place where I'm just ignorant about my praise. 
where I'm just ignorant with how I praise God. I'm just ignorant about where I praise God and what I praise God for. That's what it requires, that type of faith. I'm not bothered by stuff I don't see. I'm not even bothered by stuff I'm impatient about because I know I have an appointment with praise. And once I get to a place where I start praising God, it works itself out. Steady your feet. We're done here today. I want to help somebody today. I want to encourage you to be a praiser. Maybe you don't know what that requires of your life. Maybe you don't know what that requires from you on a personal level. But we want to get to a place where praise is what we do. Praise is our anthem. Praise becomes second nature. And it's our lifestyle, a lifestyle of praise. Amen. We might have to change our title, our, 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 our mantra from more compassion and fewer complaints to more praise and fewer complaints. Because praise is beneficial for the believer. Praise blesses God, but in return, God blesses you. Can I just pose that question out there? Who needs a blessing? Who needs a blessing? Whether it's medicinal, whether it's physical, whether it's financial, whether it's mental. God wants to bless you. God can bless you. But are you prepared to praise God today? That's the question. He can bless you and he will bless you. But are you ready to praise? Are you ready to praise today? I thank you right now, Jesus. So we're headed over to my house and we're going to baptize Zaya today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of her sins. And let me just say this, that in itself is praiseworthy. You know, all of heaven rejoices over one sinner, over one soul that repents. And, and so we might be few in number, but the host of heaven stands up when she comes up out of the water and salutes her and says, well done. Hello, we want to thank you for watching this segment. We would like to hear more from you. Please follow us and connect with us via social media outlets. We want to offer you an opportunity to partner with us. We can do more together. Below is the information on how you can be part of bringing this message from our community to yours. And before you leave, take our model with you. More compassion, fewer complaints.